is Jen. I'm an admissions counselor at Western Oregon University, um, and I'm here to kind of talk to you about our university, um, give you some general information so you can kind of make the most informed decision as you're applying for colleges as well as as you're actually going into college. So we are located in Monmouth, Oregon. Um, it's about 20 minutes away from Salem, about an hour and a half hour away from Eugene, as well as about an hour away from Portland, depending on where you're coming from. Um, so while we are in more of a rural area, um, we're definitely very close to a lot of bigger towns, which I really like because um, it's not a bunch of hustle and bustle all the time. Our admissions requirements are fairly simple, not too bad. For first year students, we need a 3.0 unweighted GPA, as well as the completion of the following classes with the C minus or better. So English of four years, math, including algebra two or higher, um, three years of math still, three years of science and social sciences, and then two years of the same foreign language. Usually this is just what you need to take to graduate from high school anyway. Um, so it's not typically too big of an issue, especially if you're coming from a traditional high school setting um, but I always like to mention that just to be sure and then we do ask for ACT or SAT scores if necessary so we have been test optional for quite a while meaning if you meet these admissions requirements of the 3.0 unweighted GPA and you've met all of those um, class requirements you're automatically admitted to Western Oregon University if you don't happen to meet those, please still apply because we have what's called a comprehensive review. And that just asks for a personal statement and letters of recommendation to kind of get more full of a story of your application and yourself rather than just like sets of numbers that are attached to you. Um, so typically with a comprehensive review, we ask for ACT or SAT scores. This year, we're not going to be requiring those if you do go through comprehensive review, um, obviously because those tests are hard to get into right now, if they're even happening, I'm not even sure. <laughs> so quick admissions or application process. We need a submitted online application, um, a $60 application fee, as well as your high school transcripts. Um, so Lacey can send those over. I don't know if you all use electronic um, sending services, but you can send them over through that. Overall, it's a pretty simple application process. Can I jump in and just clarify of for course. them? Okay, so for... Um... For your official high school transcripts, um, you'll request that through Mrs. Flagg. Um, normally I tell students she's downstairs in the counseling office, right next to <laughs> Rex's office. Um, however, you don't actually need to know where she is sitting anymore, uh, but she will have, um, I'll provide her email address and we're working on a Google form so you guys can really easily request uh, official transcripts to be sent to the college of your choice. So just so you guys know, there will be a process and we'll talk about that in senior seminar a little bit. Perfect, thank you, Thanks, Lacey. Jen. Yeah. So obviously the cost of college is a very big issue, something that a lot of students think about as one of their top priorities getting into different colleges and universities. Um, so I wanna be super transparent about that and just let you know upfront. Um, our projected 2021-2022 tuition and fees are about $21,000 for the entire year. So not some trimester or semester, the entire year. Um, tuition and fees is about 10,000 and room and board is about 11,000. Um, now I do like to mention that with this graph, um, our tuition and fees um, are based off of if you're taking 15 credits of courses at Western Oregon University. Full time is 12 credits and you can take up to 20 credits. So this tuition and fees is right smack dab in the middle of what you might expect, but it definitely can be lower and it definitely can be higher. Um, a lot of the additional, um, a lot of the costs that are also put in here, this isn't my favorite graph to look at tuition and fees, so I should probably change that, but I didn't. <laughs> um, but they do include things like transportation costs, um, books and supplies, uh, additional, things like that. And those you aren't paying to Western Oregon University. Those are just an estimation, so you can kind of accurately budget how much you'll be spending in total at Western Oregon. 
So these additional fees honestly amount to $2,000, $3,000 for the entire year, which I disagree with. I think that's a very high estimation. Typically, I spend, um, when I was a student at Western, I spent maybe $50 a term on books. Um, maybe I bought an extra pen or something <laughs> um, each term, um, but they're definitely higher um, on the higher estimation end. Um, so just make sure that you recognize that as well. And um, about over 78% of our first year freshmen actually receive financial aid. Um, so we have a great financial aid program. Obviously we work with FAFSA, outside scholarships, grants, things like that. Um, but I do like to mention different kinds of things that you should be looking for for scholarships and things like that. So this is just a slide for our Western Undergraduate Exchange, but you are Oregon students, so I'm not gonna go over that, but we do have it if you're interested. Um, <laughs> so for our financial aid, um, we actually have a general scholarship application through Western Oregon University that allows you to apply for over 70 scholarships with just one form. So I don't know if you all have started the scholarship process, but it can get really tedious. Um, so the fact that we have one form that applies you to over 70 different scholarships is incredible. It's super, super helpful. Um, some additional scholarships that you can apply for are our diversity commitment scholarship, um, and that's $6,000 a year renewable for four years. So that's a really nice scholarship. All you need to do to get that scholarship is um, fill out an essay just talking about what diversity means to you, how it has impacted you. Um, and I always like to make sure that I mention this isn't just racial or ethnic diversity. This can be gender or sexual orientation diversity, financial diversity, um, maybe if you're first generation or low income, things like that. That all qualifies. Um, so please be sure to apply for it, even if you're like, maybe potentially possibly I could get it. The worst that can happen is that you have to write an additional essay, but the best that could happen is an additional $24,000 um, throughout the entire time that you're here. So I think that's worth it. Um, our general scholarship deadline is March 1st. So that's a really important date to remember. Um, Western does have rolling admissions, meaning you can apply basically at any time. We had people applying for our current fall term two weeks before it actually started. So we're pretty flexible on that. However, if you're interested in getting financial aid and scholarships, you definitely want to apply by February 1st. Um, I recommend, even applying now. And there's a few reasons for that that I can go over. Um, so if you apply by February 1st, that gives you about enough time to get accepted to Western and give you a few days to fill out the scholarship application, which I mean, that works. But if you apply now, November, December, January kind of time, um, you'll have the most time to fill out your scholarship application. Um, the general scholarship questions come out November 1st. Um, so you do have quite a bit of time to fill those out. Um, also for housing, um, students uh, reserve their housing on a first come first serve basis, which means the first, um, the earlier you get accepted to Western, the higher chance you have of living in the residence hall, the actual hall, even the actual room that you want to live in. So that's super incentivizing, I think, um, although I do like all of our housing options. Some other scholarships that I like to mention are a presidential scholarship. This is an automatic scholarship based off of merit for students. You'll receive it um, right after you get accepted to Western Oregon. So you can get from $1,000 to $5,500 per year renewable based off of your GPA. So as far as majors and programs, we have over 50 majors and programs. I'm going to go through the main ones um, just to kind of give you an idea of what we offer at Western Oregon. 
So our College of Education includes ASL studies, ASL English interpreting studies. Um, also, if you're interested in being a teacher, we have teacher licensure programs. You can be um, get an early childhood studies degree. Also, community health and exercise science are really big programs on our campus. For our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, we have everything from behavioral sciences, so psychology, if you want to be a counselor, gerontology, business, economics, creative arts, um, criminal justice is a really big program on our campus, as well as humanities, so um, political science, public policy, Latinx studies, a bunch of different stuff like that, natural science and mathematics. And then something really, um, I think, cool that we offer is a pre-professional programs. Um, so these include things like pre-nursing, pre-med, and pre-law. What these do is they get you, um, you're taking all of the prerequisite classes that you'll need to get um, in order to get into a law school or a nursing school or a med school, things like that. But you're also getting the support of a small campus um, as well as our great science program. So your advisors will be working with you to not only get through the classes that you need, but to get any additional community service that you need, um, practicum experience that you need, everything like that. So you can make sure that you're ready to apply for those additional colleges. One of my favorite parts about Western Oregon University is how much we support our students. Um, so I'm gonna go through some of our my favorite, I think our most prominent resources. Obviously there's a bunch more that I can talk to you about if you're interested. So we do offer free academic tutoring and free advising. Um, so the academic tutoring includes our computer science tutoring center, English as a second language, math, science, writing, and general tutoring. Um, this is all done by student tutors, meaning you're not going to just sit down with your professor again um, and hear the same lecture from them. A lot of the times with tutoring, especially general tutoring, um, things like that, a big issue is differences in teaching styles and learning styles. So you can really sit down with that student who has already taken that class, most likely from the same professor. Um, and figure out exactly what this professor is wanting, what exactly is going to be on the test, and obviously work through some assignments as well. We do have some new peer advising opportunities. Um, so the Center for Leadership and Creativity, I believe started last year, if you're interested in improving leadership skills, um, as well as psychology peer advisor, advising. Um, so that kind of mix it, mixes advising and tutoring the psychology center. Um, but again, it's all student led. And then we do have a digital media center, which is really great. It's kind of like um, a library with tutors and you can get green screens, video cameras, microphones, anything like that. You can use them in studios um, and get help whenever you need it. So our Office of Disability Services is one of my favorite resources on our campus. They provide one-on-one -on -one accommodations um, to students who have a visible or invisible um, disability that they need or want accommodations for. So you do need to register and apply as a, a student who needs accommodations, but it's really not too bad. Um, it's just kind of letting yourself be known within the office. Um, and by doing that, you can get a lot of additional support. So some very common ones are you can have an additional note taker to take notes alongside you um, or in the same class as you. Um, so you can make sure that you get all the notes. You can have alternative testing. So um, some really common alternative testing formats are time and a half, as well as being in your own little room to take a test rather than in a classroom with 30 to 40 other people. Um, you can get ADA furniture. If you have um, a emotional support animal or service animal, this is where you'll also get them registered to be on campus. 
Our student enrichment program focuses on students who are first generation, so neither of their parents have a bachelor's degree. Um, if they're low income and that's based on FAFSA, or if you have a documented physical or learning disability. So what the student enrichment program does is it provides additional advising for students. Um, so this can just be, you can use them as an academic advisor. You can use them as just a general advisor. If you're like, I don't even really know what's going on. What can I get involved in? How do I fill out like job applications, things like that. Um, they also provide a lot of great additional equipment. So if you, break your laptop or you don't have a laptop at the moment um, and you need one, you can check one out th through the student enrichment program. They have calculator checkout programs. They also have their own book exchange program for students. Um, and then lastly, they also provide um, lower cost or free tickets to events around campus. So whereas a ticket might be five to $20, you would be getting it for maybe a dollar, two dollars, or even free as a student in the student enrichment program. Housing and dining is very important. Obviously, this is one of the biggest changes that happens when you move into college. So I'm gonna go over our housing and dining options really fast. Um, so we do have a first year live in requirement. Um, that means if you come to Western the year after you graduate, you are required to live on campus. Um, that's based off of a lot of different studies that have shown GPAs are higher, graduation rate within four years is higher and student or campus life involvement is higher. Um, for students who live on campus. Obviously, living on campus in residence halls is kind of a touchy situation right now with COVID. Um, so typically, while we have a 30 mile radius for students who are living with parents or guardians to petition to live off campus, now it's 60 miles. So depending on where you all are in Eugene, you can petition to live off campus, um, especially if this policy lasts until next year. Additionally, while we typically have double rooms, so a residence hall room with two students, two beds, two dressers, two desks, everything like that for a certain rate. Now we have students living alone. So typically we would call that like our super single, meaning you bought out the entire room, but this year it's just what you're living in. So you're actually getting those two beds, those two desks, a fridge, a fridge freezer, microwave combo to yourself, but you're still paying our typical housing rate. So that's honestly a pretty good deal, um, considering that you can just make a king bed now um, just by pushing the twin beds together. Um, so we do have some first year specific residence halls. So this includes Heritage and Barnum Hall, sometimes Landers, depending on the students um, that are coming back into housing, things like that. We also, oh, let me go back. So we also have some all year um, residence halls as well as upperclassmen specific residence halls. So Ackerman Hall is for anyone, regardless of if they're first year student, a senior in grad school, they can live in Ackerman Hall. So if you're not super interested in living with only first years or you want more experience with um, kind of upperclassmen to get more different types of perspectives, Ackerman might be a good choice for you. If you're like, I want to be with people who are also 18, 19, this is their first time living away from um, a parent or guardian's house, um, things like that, then maybe one of our first year residence halls is best for you. As far as dining, honestly, I know campus dining just in general kind of has a bad rap, but I think our dining is really delicious. Um, when we were working on campus and having on campus events and things like that, some of my favorite days were days that I could get Falsett's food um, for free. I would <laughs> um, not only not have to cook or pay for another meal um, and just because it was delicious. So 
Falsteps is going to be the main dining hall that you go to. Um, they sell things at wholesale price, so they're not marking it up to make a profit. And you also get 40% off of that price as a student living in the residence halls. So that was a lot of numbers. Basically, it's really cheap to eat at Western Oregon University. Um, there's also a little, lot of different types of options. Um, so if you're vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, dairy-free, if you eat halal or kosher, then we have all of those options available and they're very easily just um, located in front of all of the food that you're being served. We have fresh made sushi every day. We have, I think our waffle station is open um, all the time now. We have acai stations, we have pho, we have curry. We also have home style if you just want a burger and fries, things like that. We also have two coffee shops, Cafe Allegro and The Press. So The Press actually serves Starbucks, um, which is really important for some people, um, but it is the only um, coffee shop in the Monmouth Independence area that serves Starbucks coffee. If you're not a Starbucks fan and you're more of a Dutch Bros fan, there is a Dutch Bros right across the street from Western Oregon University. I actually have mine um, today, so it's very common to see students kind of going, um, going to Dutch Bros in between classes or before classes, things like that. So we have a great campus recreation program. Um, so this is not only a typical gym, so uh, treadmills, weightlifting, things like that. We also have fitness classes. Um, this can be Zumba or um, spin classes, but it can also be meditation classes. We have aquatic facility programs. So we do have open swim lap swim but we also have um, swimming classes as well as um, aquatic fitness programs. So like Zumba in the water, or we actually just started like a paddleboard yoga class. So you get that extra little bit of balance on the uh, paddleboard. And then lastly, we have outdoor programs. So if you're interested in hiking, um, snowshoeing, anything like that. We have a lot of outdoor programs. Um, typically, the only cost for the outdoor programs is transportation. So it's maybe five, ten dollars in order to go, but you get all of the materials that you need. You get a full day. You get experienced people working with you outdoors that'll sometimes even do like different tree identification and things like that. So it's super fun. And currently, our campus recreation does have a large virtual component to it. Um, so typically, I think every night we have a virtual fitness class streaming on our Instagram live, um, which is really cool. I highly recommend you check it out because you don't need to be a student in order to follow us on Instagram um, or check out our live. Um, and those fitness classes are um, kind of lower impact without any um, materials needed. So it's definitely easier to do it at home. We also have, um, it's kind of like a Netflix or Peloton type thing where you can go through and scroll through different online um, workouts. So you can do those from home if you prefer fitness classes or things like that, but don't want to go into an actual building. We are um, participating in NCAA Division II athletics. Um, so these are some of our athletics. If you're interested in being a student athlete at Western, please let me know um, so I can get you in contact with the right people. Um, we do offer partial scholarships for athletics, but those come directly from the athletics program. So uh, myself as an admissions counselor doesn't have too much information about it, but I can definitely uh, steer you in the right direction. If you like sports, but you don't really want to be too competitive, we have club sports and intramural sports. So club sports, um, you still get to travel some, um, compete against different schools, but instead of uh, the more intense practices, things like that. You maybe practice once or twice a week, have a game every other weekend. So it's a little bit easier to manage. Um, it's not as competitive. 
things like that. And our intramural sports are just groups of friends playing with different groups of friends. Um, so I actually participated in a volleyball intramural um, like championship league um, one of my years at Western Oregon. And we proudly only won one of the games that we participated in and that was because the other team never showed up so we won by default um <laughs> but that kind of shows you like it's just so you can have fun and kind of get active and um in lieu of more of our kind of high contact intramural sports we're actually doing like esports so you can play madden fifa rocket leagues things like that um with different, I don't know, gaming devices. I don't know too much about it, but I know that the people who participate say it's a lot of fun getting to play these games with other students that they might not normally play them with. Obviously, we're not just a school about athletics. We have a bunch of different cam campus groups and activities. Um, we have over 60 clubs ranging from clubs based off of academic interests, social interests, um, identity-based clubs, so multicultural student union, black student union, our LGBTQ social club. Um, we have Greek life, so we have two fraternities and two sororities. Um, if you're interested in student government, we have Associated Students of Western Oregon University. You can volunteer there or you can get a job there. Um, we have student media, our Veterans Resource Center, a whole bunch of different things going on around campus, as well as a bunch of different events and traditions. Um, so I do have some of them listed here. Um, so some of my favorite are Dia de los Muertos. Um, the Freshman Sunrise is always really cool because um, the week before we freshmen start their classes, you actually move into Western. And I believe it's the Wednesday or Thursday of that week, you all get up around 5 or 6 a.m. before um, the sunrise. And you kind of watch the sunrise together. You hear from your ASU student president, and then you paint a little bit of the sidewalk on Western's campus with your name. So you make your mark on Western's campus. I think it's really fun. Um, we have a really cool bonfire. Um, one of my favorite events is actually our powwow that usually happens in the spring. Um, they have circle dancing, a bunch of different dancing as well as vendors. Um, so I always make a point to go there um, and you can see the rest of them. I just like pointing them out because I get really excited about our events. <laughs> um, so that is basically the end of my presentation. This is the general contact information. I'll put my specific contact information in the chat for the people that are here as well as give it to Lacey so she can give it to anyone else. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna stop recording.